So I want to kick this off with Sophie's Choice because mm. I just think it breaks the ice real nice. Mm. Uh, so yeah, two options. Yeah. You get to keep one. Okay. okay. I want you to tell me which one you're going to keep. So I'm just. This is the keepers. This is the keepers. Okay. The other one's got to go. Mm. Okay. Scary. So. Potato fries or sweet potato fries? Sweet potato fries oh. can go, I think. Oh, can go. Right, okay. Yeah, oh, I had you there. <laughs> nearly, nearly. Well, that was, that was a Although surprise. they are nice. A recent discovery, but yeah. Mm. I, I, I find they're nice when you get them in a restaurant because mm. they have a certain way of being able to mm. cook them that is kind of like salty and keeps Ooh. them crispy without burning yeah. them. Yeah, when I try and replicate that in the kitchen. We don't even it all, Yeah, it all goes <laughs> apart. <laughs> Okay, Cadbury or Galaxy? Oh, Cadbury is a keeper. That's 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 a good job because it just so happens I've got your little gift right here. <laughs> I've, I've always said you're a lovely man. That is a result. I'll just sit here, forget the internet, I'll just drink. Is that really for me? It is, it oh, is, yeah. It's been hard. Been hard. Been hard in there waiting for it to come. Oh, this is a result. Okay, I can take the rest. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, Beach or mountains? Mm. Oh, it's a tricky one, mm. actually. Love both. Yeah. I'll keep beach. Yeah. One's, one's definitely more holiday. Yeah. The other is definitely yeah, more that's, like, that's adventure tricky. kind mm -hmm. of thing. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I can go for a bit more of a rest on the beach mm. than I can for a bit of a... I've done mm. my adventure time. I feel like I'm past it. Yeah, so. yeah, I can still do a bit more. But yeah, still, yeah, yeah, still do a bit more, but the, the kind that ain't going to kill me. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Batman or Spider-Man? Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? I know, I knew that to wind you up. Uh, oh, I don't know. Spider-Man can stay. <laughs> <laughs> My, you know why I said that. Yeah, I do know why I said that. My boy will be very happy because mm -hmm. he's okay. he goes Spider Man. Books or films? Oh, oh, now that's tricky. Oh, I guess I guess books, but that's a really hard call. So I love films. Oh, yeah. Absolutely love films, but the whole thing with a book is you just see it differently when you watch a film and you've read the book. It's just never quite there in your head. There's a whole thing going on. So yeah, yeah. I know you're a film man, so that's probably a real bad. So answer. that's that's the end of the interview. Then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Uh, YouTube or Netflix? Well, Netflix has got to stay because I pay a subscription. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't want to get my money's worth. <laughs> Celebration or rest? I'll take rest, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Celebration is good every yeah, once in be. a while. Yeah. But it's like. Rest is necessary. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like if it's one or the other. Yeah. Take we'll rest. rest. Yeah. Okay. Sweet or savoury? Sweet. Uh, that's no that, problem a quick there. answer. No problem. No there. hesitation. No hesitation. <laughs> Rome or Jerusalem? Wow, great cities. I think Jerusalem. Okay. Mm. The eighties or the nineties? That's that's the look of a man who would. Who, who yeah. Looks like he wants to get rid of both. Yeah, probably. <laughs> well, you see, the nineties is when I met my missus, so okay. we better go nineties. Yeah. <laughs> tactical, tactical voting. <laughs> <laughs> Jurassic Park or Jaws? Mm. Which one I'm keeping? Both Spielberg movies. Yeah, I think I'll keep yeah. Jaws. Okay, it? yeah, I'd I'd go Jaws. Mm. I lo I'd love Jurassic Park, but I yeah. think I would I think I would go. Jaws. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Look, your face says it's maybe neither one of them. Okay. Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whales or dolphins? Dolphins. Oh, another quick, mm. another quick answer there. Hammer or screwdriver? Probably hammers more it's useful than my hand. Hammer, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's yeah. the only two I can use. Yeah. <laughs> if it, unless something needs smashing, I'm just. Mm. I'm not really. Yeah. Classical or pop? Pop. Oh, I'm a feather style, I'm afraid. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I think ultimately, I probably. Yeah. Probably would. I mean, there's certain classicals yeah. that I really love, but yeah. not many. I mean, yeah. I just, I'm just not educated yeah. really. But pop, I, I probably yeah. know a lot more about I, I'm it. I'm more the rock man that's kind mm. of got classical influences. Yeah, I, think, so. I can see that yeah. in your demeanour. Yeah. 
Uh, car or motorbike? Well, car. Once upon a time, it would have been motorbike, <laughs> but I got fed up with getting cold and wet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Flying or sailing? I've never tried sailing. Oh, no? so, and flying, you can tend to go farther and faster, <laughs> and you get you get meals on airplanes. <laughs> <airplane. laughs> yeah, Autumn or spring? Spring, mm. leading into summer. Yeah, yeah. I like the colours of autumn, yeah. but I prefer. But you sit the, down though, because you know what's coming. Yeah, yeah. More cold or yeah, wet. Yeah, I prefer the feeling of spring. It's got to be said. Red or blue? Oh, now see, I like both colours. Um, I guess I'd have to say blue because I'm a Chelsea man. <laughs> Pizza or steak? Depends on the steak. If it's well cooked, I mean, you can't really beat it. But oh. generally, I'd probably go for pizza. It's oh. cheap. <laughs> <laughs> Elton John uh. or John Lennon? Mm. That's, a, that's just a no from both, in it? Yeah. We'll move on. Yeah, move on. <laughs> C.S. Lewis mm. or Tom Wright? Oh, different categories completely. <laughs> oh. I mean, I, Probably Tom Wright, but I mean C.S. Lewis. Really? I absolutely love really? C.S. Lewis. Wow, yeah. okay. All right. I found Tom Wright pretty stimulating in recent years. I guess okay. I probably read Lewis first and yeah, yeah. feeling All bad right. now. Yeah. All right. Sorry, C.S. Action or comedy? Action. Very quick. Every time. Deep space or bottom of the ocean? Deep space. I yeah. Think. It's more of it. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, even though the danger level is probably equal, mm. I feel less threatened about a big open space yeah. than I do being like buried under dark, yeah, filthy yeah. water. No, that's good yeah. for deep space. Yeah. <clears throat> ice cream or chocolate? Um, mm, depends on the ice cream, but generally chocolate, oh, I suppose. Okay. Now. <laughs> Steady now. <laughs> This is the real Sophie's choice. Okay, I'm going to have to have a drink here to I, help. I don't know if I should do it. No, you're going to anyway. But, but I don't. I, please, please don't. If, if if you start to look like you're going to cry, okay, then we'll just we'll just move on. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Timmy or Poppy? Oh, that's harsh. <laughs> Sorry. So, so for, oh. for, for anyone who doesn't know. Timmy was, oh, was <laughs> the best dog ever. It was ever. John's previous dog that he absolutely loved. Oh, and Poppy is his current dog who that he absolutely, absolutely loves. loves. Um, I, I refuse to be drawn. Right, okay. I love them both <laughs> immensely. That, that, was the, that was the true Sophie's choice. Um, I was going to go Sue or Poppy. Uh, well, I was worried you were going to do that. <laughs> no, no! It would have been Sue. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you naughty boy. <laughs> okay, uh, next up. Yeah. We have a little segment I like to do, uh, mm -hmm. you know, in which I get the guests to pick a movie off my shelves. Which is quite a, a set of movies, I've got to say. It is. It's, it's mm. like I, I've pretty much got rid of, uh, certainly off the shelf at any rate, all the ones that I, what I would consider to be below a four star movie. Okay. Uh, so I just kept my, yeah. yeah. But you went with Gladiator. Well, yeah. So for me, that is a five star. Yeah, it's an epic, yeah. epic, when well, in the true sense of the world, epic film. Mm. So, what, so what is it? What is it about Gladiator that just... I think when I watched it first time, just that opening kind of scene where they're in the woods and he's got his trusty dog <clears throat> following him on his horse mm. and he's just rallying the troops and the music is absolutely spot Hans on. Yeah. And then... And then kind of battle commences I mean it's just like one of the most stirring things yeah. I mean I, I just love all that and from there on in it's just it's a boy film I've got to say I mean <laughs> I, I mean you say I, that but my mum loved it yeah, yeah well I, I think Sue actually really enjoyed it yeah. as well but I I know I didn't like the kind of his his nemesis character. I I found him really repulsive and annoying. Yeah, but you said, but you're that's supposed job to. Done, yeah, it? absolutely. Right, yeah. Um, I think anyone who identifies with that character yeah. maybe needs to seek therapy. I think maybe it, so. Yeah. yeah, but it's just, I mean it's just an epic film. Yeah. I mean the first time you see, it, you're just like wow, what a spectacle! I always remember the snot oh. on Russell Crowe yeah. when you see the feet dangling, and it's yeah. just like. Yeah. I think it was Russell Crowe at his <laughs> yeah. best. I mean, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, he's yeah. just... he was That, just that and LA Confidential for me, I'm like... Yeah, I, I don't remember that one so well. I'm oh, sure I've seen it. It's such but, a great film. Yeah. Great film. But, uh, yeah, 
I think this and Braveheart, that was another one I totally, same sort of genre, just, yeah. maybe I just like battle for <laughs> I don't know, but I mean, epic films. Yeah. No, epic. I love Braveheart as well, but I think for me, Gladiator just clinches mm. it, I think. I think that was the, the role that Crow was... He was made for it, really, player. wasn't it? Yeah, yeah big time. absolutely. Big time. And a lot of really great themes in there. Oh, clever stuff. Like, I mean, it's been a long time since I've seen it. I saw it on the shelf and I thought, well, I must watch that again. Yeah, but, yeah it's been what a long, time. What do we do in life? It oh. goes in eternity. So you'd remember yeah. all, the, all yeah. the lines as well. <laughs> I mean, the camaraderie with him and the other yeah. slaves, mm. I mean, and him, the way he kind of led them and yeah. melded them, I loved yeah. all that. Yeah. yeah. Like, Good. It's, it's a great film. Great, mm. great man film. Mm -hmm. They don't make enough man films well these days. i mean I, I think I, yeah i agree with you there's some epic films yeah. but there may be not so many of late but yeah. that was yeah you, you gotta you gotta go for something like john wick these days it took to get a bit of like <laughs> unadulterated i'm not sure it's the same genre really but <laughs> no 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 i'm just saying like for, for if you want if you want just a man film, yeah bunch of men hanging out but i've got to say keanu reeves does not do it for me as an actor he's just like uh, well it's, it's, it's a very it, He's very good at being him in yeah. whatever he does. Yeah. Um, but uh, I don't know if you've seen any of the John Wick movies. Yes. <laughs> yes. They're, they're great. It's like it's like two hours. Of he's up again it every time. Yeah. It just gets worse and worse and worse. But anyway, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, but I know I know you mentioned nobody before we came. You were looking for nobody on my show. Don't tell him that. <laughs> hey, that was my secret. There's, there's quite a few oh. people who, uh, yeah. It's a, that's really? a classic. It's a, a lot of people when that came out, was it two years ago, I think it was? It's the sort of film that I watched and I thought, I shouldn't be watching this. But the bus scene, I've got to say, I was crying with laughter. <laughs> I mean, I just, and we showed it to some friends and I said, oh, you've got to see this. And they were like, you like this? <laughs> I, felt, I felt so condemned. But I, I, I don't know, there was something about it. It was just... Um, well, amazing. It's, it's what I call therapeutic violence. It was. <laughs> oh dear! No one. Sh I shouldn't have said this. Oh dear, dear, dear. But yeah, you know, it was. It was quite a. I don't know. I don't know whether you're supposed to find these things funny, but I found that particular film enjoyable in all sorts of good ways. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. I shan't be recommending yeah. it. Yeah. Children, if you're oh. watching, don't watch it. Check it out. It's great film. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Now I've blown it completely. <laughs> sacked. Oh. Sacked, and that's because. <laughs> do you tell us. <laughs> so, you, so you work for, for a Christian uh, ministry. Yeah, LL, <laughs> LL Ministries. We need to edit that so, and kind of cut the two. No, out. no, no, it's staying in. It's staying. So L LL Ministries. Yeah. So this is. So is that LL as in the letter L and letter L or no? It's LL? E double L E L, and actually, it's a village in Lancashire. Okay. And so um, it. It's a, it's a Christian ministry. It started in that village in a place called LL Grange, which is right. this like mini Downton Abbey, right. incredible <laughs> stately home. Um, and it all began in 1986 with um, a guy called Peter Horobin who had a vision, right. who kind of really sensed God wanted to bring healing to his kids. And so he prayed and waited and prayed and waited. And eventually this, this property that he felt God was leading him to became, a, well, became available. So what's the work that they do then? Well, it's based on Luke 9-11, which is a verse about Jesus with his disciples. And Jesus is trying to take some time out with his boys. And so he kind of pulls them apart from the crowd. The crowd find out where he is and kind of like muscle in on the action. And if I was Jesus, I'd probably say, oh no, let's, go. let's kind of hide again. But <laughs> Jesus isn't like that. So there's this lovely verse in Luke 9, 11, which says, Jesus welcomed the people. He taught them about the kingdom of God and he healed those who were sick. And, that, and that's basically what LL does. So we have a real thing about welcome. We love to welcome people through our doors. We give them as, as good a hospitality as we possibly can. We, we want to make people feel that they're, they matter, that they're valuable. So we love on them. And then we teach them. We teach them from the Bible, no holds barred. We teach them what we believe is the different values of the kingdom of God. And then having taught them, those who really feel that they want help with struggles in their life, whether it's physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, whatever it might be, we have a real kind of sense that God's called us to pray with people. It's not counseling, it's not a special technique. It's just basically saying, let's hear your story, try and work out maybe what the roots of the problem might be and ask God to bring healing. I've never known anything like it. It's, it's, I've seen so many people come through our doors who've gradually, over time, been transformed and 
just their whole lives have been reorientated towards God and just, I mean, physical healings, but a lot of it's kind of spiritual, mental, emotional breaking from this world. And yeah, Jesus meets them. And is that open to anyone? It's like, well, I guess it's really for people who share the Christian faith, right. um, because um, that's not to say that if you don't share, you, yeah. you know, we wouldn't welcome you. But this is really saying that it's Jesus that does the healing. Right. So if you don't really believe in Jesus, it's probably unlikely that you're going to yeah. want him to interact with your life. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a real privilege to be part of it. So yeah, thank you for the plug. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> um, Speaking of plugs, mm. uh, I had you on today because I wanted to talk about your book. Oh, bless yeah. you. Bless you. Thank you, Brian. So you, you've written a book. Yes. Uh, I think uh, when, whenever you see a book that is written by someone, I think one of the first questions, I think, is what makes you qualified to write a book on oh. this particular subject? Yeah. Um, so... What, what makes, makes you me qualified? <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to. I have to start off by saying I didn't intend to write a book. Right. So you remember the wonderful, glorious days of lockdown when we were all mm. shut away and yeah. couldn't go to work. Well, I've always loved the Bible. I've got to say, I just find it fascinating. I mean, I want to know God more, and that's the best place I can think of to go to to learn more about God. And I particularly like how it starts. I love the. It's like I said about Gladiator. I love the start of something, and uh, I love the fact that when the Bible starts, you've got this incredible first few chapters in Genesis, which just kind of blow your mind, really. I mean, I love it. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. I mean, what a great opening line. <laughs> so while we were on lockdown, I, I decided I would have a little project and I would pretend I was writing a book right. for my own... Um, Amusement. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it was actually. And I really enjoyed just pretending I was writing a book. And I, and I, you know, I, I did a bit of studying, but I just loved thinking through some of these things. You know, what's it all about? Is it trying to explain how it happened, when it happened? Those are the things most people get hung up on. Yeah. The questions I had weren't those really. They were why and who. Um, so anyway, I wrote, I wrote a manuscript, and I didn't think anything of it because I thought. I'm not qualified to teach this, <laughs> as, as you rightly mentioned. So um, my my dear wife got hold of this and actually read it and thought it wasn't too bad and thought, oh, this is all right. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. <laughs> so unbeknownst to me, um, she knew somebody who we were working with who was a, a book editor and she gave it to this guy and basically said, is there any chance you can help me put this into print? Right. I knew nothing about it. So that's what happened. So you didn't even know she'd gone I, to the... I didn't know anything <laughs> about this. So sure enough, he, he did all the stuff that you need to do and um, took it to Amazon. Am I allowed to say that? And yeah. bless them, they have this incredible thing now where if, if you if you type set it all and set it up right, they will publish a book for you and they will even pay you a few pennies for the right. privilege. So, 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 so it's essentially published through Amazon. It's self-published through Amazon, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so... When when it was kind of fairly fed up, far on in the process, my dear wife Sue said to me, "I've got a little surprise for you." And I'm a, I have to I have to be honest. I was so deeply touched. I was so moved. Oh. It's like the nicest thing I can ever remember <clears throat> that somebody had valued something. I made. I don't feel particularly <laughs> creative, but it was just like wow. And she'd gone to so much trouble, and then Paul, this other chap, had gone to so much trouble. I was so grateful, and literally. By the time I, I knew it was happening, it was more or less done. And, wow. and then kind of the first copy came through and it was just like, wow. I mean, clever, important people write books. I don't <laughs> write books. But I, 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 re I looked at this thing, I thought, that ain't half bad. Once it was published. Well, this did, was the did, first did, did, draft, you see. Right, so then, okay. then you're gonna, there was a few little typos and things, yeah. but I, I kind of thought, oh, this is all right then. I was just going to say, once once it was out, were you like, oh man, I wish they'd have told me well, first because I'd have changed that and I moved I mean, the that. thing was, I literally, I did listen to a few things afterwards. I thought, I should have put in about that. I should have put, but I thought, yeah. but actually, at the time of writing it, that was as, that was where I was at. So you, it's always, it's always things you could do to make it better. I just had to say, okay, we're going to go with this. Yeah. So sure enough... It went to print and we got the first ones published. I can't, it was one of the most incredible things. And you got your first book back and you think, I did that. Yeah. It was really quite yeah. something. And um, and then I read it and I thought, am I going to be super embarrassed about this? And I thought, that's not too bad. Yeah. So then I gave a few copies to folk and uh, just asked them what they thought. And people kept saying to me, it just sounds like you speaking. It's, it's, yeah, really, it it's really good. And no one came back and said, this is complete 
rubbish, <laughs> thankfully. Um, and I, I was really, I was, I don't know, am I allowed to say I was really chuffed? It just felt such a joy. So where I work at LL Ministries, um, we have a bookshop. Okay. So I said to the book manager, do you want to stop yeah. this? And she said, yeah, sure. Right. So we, we priced it on Amazon quite cheap um, because I didn't think anybody would pay anything for it. <laughs> but literally, yeah, so we sell, we sell it at work now and people who come on courses, because I, I do teach quite a few of the things that are actually in the book. They, they, tell, tell us a bit about the book. Just like... Well, it's called the prologue, and it's basically an introduction to the Bible. It's based on reflections on the first three chapters of the Bible. So what I'm basically doing is taking those three chapters, and I'm trying to ask myself the question, so what's this saying? What does so it why mean? Why did you decide on, the, on three? Why not four? Why not four? Well, I think, to my mind, you see, the first three chapters of the Bible are like a prologue. They're like the introduction to the whole thing. The story really gets going a little bit later. But for me, this is like prehistory. This is like God saying... OK, let me just give you the kind of the basics. Like any book, you read a prologue and then the book gets going. Yeah. And, and I'm quite often tempted to skip the prologue. But if you do, you miss some really important things that are going to open up <laughs> the rest of the book. So I decided that I would, I would call it the prologue and actually say, and this is, my, this is my suggestion, that those first three chapters, if we get bogged down with the science of them and the timing of them, I think we might be missing the point. This is, this is an introduction to the greatest story ever told. Some people would say... It's written in poetic language. Mm -hmm. Some people believe that it is actually the story itself isn't meant as a historical text, but actually poetry. Um, some people do say, and you know, it's meant to be taken literally. Mm -hmm. Like you say, don't matter what side of the camp you sit on on that. What what matters is well, what what's the point of the yeah. story? What's yeah. the reason for telling us in this the way? The wise. And uh, and I think the book does such a good job of delving into all those whys. Mm, thank you. And 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 particularly showing us. A lot about today, I think. There was, there was one, that, so I was reading it today. Oh, what's that? Hey, in preparation. Yes, Good yes, to yes, <laughs> So, <laughs> page 108 to 110, you go into uh, the, the power of seduction to turn a human away from <clears> God. Because <throat> you start, obviously, you've broken down the, the three chapters. Mm -hmm. you got like creation in the first chapter, second chapter, you're talking more about. The creation of man and woman and their mm. relationship to other, how, how men and women should relate to each other and whatnot. And then in chapter three, obviously, we get what every great story uh, uh, needs, which is, which is the villain mm. and, and the, the fall from grace, so to speak. Uh, and it's, there, there's something you said where it's, uh, if we linger too long, we can convince ourselves that what we know to be wrong is even something that will be good for us. Mm. That hit me just because the world we live in, and, and, and you might not want to get into this too much because obviously <laughs> certain things you just can't say mm -hmm. these days and whatnot, but, um, but I, I look at the world around us these days and it does feel to me very much like 50 years ago a lot of the things that were considered right are now considered wrong. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the things that were considered wrong are now considered right. Mm -hmm. uh, and... That 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 it does to, it does feel to me very much like a spiritual battle sometimes when you're going out into the world, um, and I do think the book does a very good job of getting to the root of that spiritual battle mm. uh, of, of of showing what's what's our role in it, how did we get into this mess, how do we get out, mm -hmm. um, and obviously the the answer to that is found in the New Testament with Jesus, but. Like, or even I, I, yeah. see, I would say it's found in that, in that chapter. It, well, it is, yeah. But uh, it, it's, <laughs> it's hinted at. Yes, I just I think it's revealed mm. in in Jesus too. It's 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 there in retrospect, I would say. In, in, uh, yeah. You know. I mean, these are old-fashioned things yeah. like sin. I mean, we don't really yeah. think about sin as, as as a problem, but actually, mm. according according to the Bible, there is a problem. Yeah. There is this thing where we have turned away from our Creator, and we think we're better off without Him. Do you think people have a warped idea of what sin actually is? Oh, I'm sure. I'm Did, sure. And so it's yeah. a it's a kind of strange concept, unless yeah. unless you've thought about it and read up about it. It's just yeah. this like weird thing. It's, it's 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 not too bad, is it? It can feel like a judgmental concept. It can do. Um, yeah. It's yeah. like, but I think when you're accepting that, no, it, it's it's not something I'm saying you've got. It's something I'm saying we've all got. We have. It's yeah. just it's just in us. And uh, I, I often think about a lot of because because people say you know like why why would God create a 
a world in which there's disease and which is this and that and the other. And I'm like, mm. oh, he didn't. Mm. We did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not suggesting I know all the answers, yeah. but I think we have to ask those questions. Mm. And as you rightly say, things change. So if you're looking to, to culture to answer those questions, what might have been right, as you said, 50 years ago, would be wrong today. So, yeah. so who was right, them or us? And yeah. we have this chronological snobbery. We think we, you know, we're, we're modern people. We we have the right answers. Mm -hmm. Well, do we? I mean, <laughs> I mean, I look around at the state of play, and so many yeah. people are miserable and yeah. lost and kind of searching for that something and they'll try nearly everything apart from the one thing that's actually going to be the answer mm -hmm. and I would have to say that is Jesus um I'm just I'm just grateful God revealed that answer to me um how did he reveal it to you oh now there's a question go on tell us when did you become a Christian and why what was it that... okay so in my early 20s I found myself in a pub in my hometown with my mates and in walked this girl who I knew her parents knew my parents. And to be honest, I, I quite thought she looked a bit of all right. And I wanted to impress my mates. <laughs> I was totally not a Christian at those days. I didn't go to church, wasn't really interested. I, I just thought if I could find the right person, that would kind of, I don't know, fill this void that I felt. So I was I was looking to find someone, but um, my, my desires were pretty unwholesome, really. <laughs> so in, in walks this girl, and to impress my mates, I said, I am I'm just going to go and uh, get a number or something. I can't remember what I said. So we met up and went to another pub, and I, I must confess, my, my intentions were very dishonourable. <laughs> But as we got talking, it appeared, I mean, I didn't know this girl at all, really. I, I, I met, met her through her family a couple of times. She was just really nice. And I'd never really met anybody quite like her. And over the, as we got talking, it, it became apparent that she was different to anybody I'd ever met before. She actually was a Christian. Right. And to, to, to tell you the truth, as we're in this pub, behind her in the corner of the pub, there was this couple snogging for England. <laughs> And it was just like quite off-putting, really. So I was trying to keep eye contact and talk to this girl. And I've got this kind of couple in the corner. I'm thinking, OK, so how do I go from this conversation to there <laughs> as quickly as possible? Um, so I, I'm thinking this stuff. Anyway, we've got, we're talk, chatting away and, uh, you know, she's sort of saying she believes in God. And I'm saying, well, you know, why? How do you know God's there? And she said, well, I know him. I said, know him? This is all a bit strange to me. I'm not familiar with any of this language. <laughs> And she, she said, you know, you can know him too. I think, yeah, okay. Perhaps she's, perhaps she's not right for me, I don't know. But she was quite attractive. So we, we continued. So we got talking. She said, you know, if you want God to reveal himself to you, ask him to do that. I said, well, what's he going to do? So I'm, I'm here. And she said, no, you know, just talk to him in your mind. Just ask God for a simple sign that tells you he's there and he's actually interested. And I just thought, this is bizarre. No, I mean, this is a whole new game to me. I've yeah. never... Never known anything like it. So this couple are still so down How, how old were you at this point? Twenty-two, something like that. Okay. And what? And what was your what was your main values in life at this point? Uh, me, me, me. I think probably. Right. Okay. Um, um, yeah. I mean, I wasn't horrible or anything, but I was probably pretty self-orientated. Right. Um, and girls was a pretty high priority. If I'm honest. <laughs> so, a couple are still going for England in the corner. So I thought, OK, well, I'll give this a go. So literally, as we're sitting in this pub, in my head, I'm saying, OK, God, if you're there, just give me some sort of sign that you really do exist. Anything? Just something? So I do this without her really knowing anything about it. Yeah. We're still chatting. So this couple stopped snogging and, and start walking out the bar. And as they come past our table, they stopped right. at our table. And I'm thinking, hang on, what's all this about? And they said, I hope you don't mind, but we've been listening to your conversation. And I thought... Well, you didn't look like this thing. <laughs> anyway, and they said, we are both Christians too. We hope you find Jesus yeah. and walked out. Okay. Now, this doesn't happen. I mean, this was bizarre. This was a whole new level of weird. Right. But I thought, hang on. I asked God to give me a little uh, sign. What I'm looking at is what I'm thinking I'm wanting. Yeah. And what they do when they come to my table is freak me out completely. It's yeah. just like, okay, I asked for a sign and I got one. From that moment on, I was interested. Right. Now, it wasn't like I was going to suddenly sign up. Um, I mean, I pursued this girl for quite some time and she kind of like reeled me in. And she introduced me to her friends who were actually very lovely and got me kind of not didn't get me going to church because I wouldn't have gone anywhere near it. But she got me it's, reading books. This girl we're talking about, it, it is soon. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, 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 oh, no, wow, no. Okay. This, 
um, so, I didn't meet Sue till we went to Bible college, right, and that was a yeah, whole oh, lot yes, later. Yes, yes, no, I knew that actually. Uh, uh, so yeah. So this is a lass called Trina, actually, right. and she she changed my life because wow. she was the first real full-on Christian I'd ever met, and I pursued her, and we did go out, you know, a bit, yeah. but really. Um, what she did was she just blew my mind. She introduced me to a whole other world. She right. she got me reading Christian books. Um, well, she got you acting as well, didn't they? Because it's like I, I think because um, that because that that moment where you're asking in your mind, God, give me a sign. Mm. That's like the first step of faith, isn't it? it really I, think, was, yeah. I think a lot of people do wait for something to happen, mm. but unless you're a very active participant in it you're not going to notice the result. Yeah. And it's, it's like Indiana Jones stepping out onto the... Onto that invisible onto bridge. Thing. Yeah. 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 If he doesn't step out, he ain't going to see the yeah. invisible bridge. Because I did ask God to prove himself on a number of occasions after that. Right. I can remember sitting outside my bedroom window and saying, OK, God, if you move that star over there, I'll know for sure you're there. And he, he didn't do it. I mean, there was... Yeah. I mean, ridiculously, I, I kind of... This was still my... It's all about me syndrome... Yeah of expecting him to, to change the universe just to prove a point. There's a difference in in your heart and head, though, isn't there? Mm. So the first time you asked there, because like the there's a place in the Bible where it says, put the Lord your God to the test, T mm. test it out. Uh, and then there's another place in the Bible where it says, do not put uh, the Lord your God to the test. Tricky, isn't so, it? Yeah, and, 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 and for me, it's, it is because it's, it's talking about Where's your heart when you're putting God to the test? Yeah. Are you putting God to the test because you genuinely want to know his will for you in your life? Or are you putting God to the test because you want to see what tricks you can get him to do? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's very gracious. I mean, even that little sign, it just got me interested because he, he met me at my level. Yeah. And I guess that's what I believe about the Christian faith is he meets us at our level. Yeah. I mean, the whole thing with Jesus, I mean... It's one thing to say you believe in God because, frankly, if you look around you, how on earth did this lot get here if there is no, no God? It, I refuse to accept that it's really a thought-through position to say this is an accident. <laughs> I mean, if you blow something up, it doesn't, tend to, it doesn't tend to come out so ordered and so wonderful. Yeah. It tends to come yeah. out in little pieces. But our the Big Bang, I mean, how it happened, I do not know, but it happened. Mm. It's essentially like saying you get a dictionary by having an explosion in a printing press. Yeah. It's like there's, there's, there's order to the thing, to, yeah. to the results of that yeah. explosion. And even if you look at human DNA now, like they've, they've been mapping the genome and it's got code in it, yeah. like actual code. Like, I mean, it really takes an awful lot of faith, I think, to not yeah. believe in God. I, I think it takes far more faith. Yeah, <laughs> and, and how disappointing, because ultimately, yeah. if, that's, if that's the case, if you're saying, I don't want God, well, this is all you've got, so make the most of it, folks. Yeah. But the Christian story, I mean, I, I just love this. You know, Jesus, who comes to reveal God to us, they kill him. <laughs> and you think, OK, well, that's a bit of a shame. Yeah. But then he cheats. Yeah. The third day, he's alive again from the dead and basically says to his followers, I told you. <laughs> There's more. There's a whole. There's a whole bigger story. Come on, if you want it. So, uh, to me, Christianity is incredible because it, it actually makes sense of so much. But it gives us hope. So, I hope some of that came through in the book. Really, is is that oh, yeah. God knows what He's doing. There is a big story. Yeah. And I, I, I always, I don't know. Do you remember the film, the series Lost? I never watched it because I'm, I'm one of those guys who I don't tend. I won't get into a TV series while it's running. Right, because, very wise. Because I don't, I hate, I've, I did it too many times in my mm. early 20s where I was stuck with a series for ages and the ending was just oh, rubbish. Lost was the worst of the worst. Uh, I well, think. that's what I heard. Yeah. So I never watched Lost and then I, and then when the ending happened and, and everyone was just like, oh, that was so bad. I was like, yeah. It I really, don't think I'll really bother. was the worst ending of all time, I think. Right. Some of the mini stories along the way were fantastic and it kept you gripped, but there was no ultimate story. I guess what I want to suggest is there is an ultimate story yeah. and we're in it. But how that story ends and whether this is chapter one of a much longer story, God in his grace has said, well, you choose. Mm. I've done all I can to show you who I am. Mm. Do you want in? Well, I want in. <laughs> I mean, that, that, that period between the pub and me actually saying I'm in was probably about 18 months of wrestling. Right. It wasn't just... Boom, boom, boom. I th had to think it through. I had to. I think the the real moment for me is so Trina lent me this book, the, the Cross and the Switchblade. 
I read this book and I just so identified with this guy, Nicky Cruz, who was kind of like angry and a bit lost. And so I read this book, first Christian book I'd ever read, and I really quite enjoyed it. I was surprised. I thought it was going to be all holy. and But it was actually really good, quite a gripping read. So then, then she lent me this book, Run Baby Run, which is like Nicky Cruz's story of how he encountered this preacher and how he changed his life. And I really loved that book. So then Trina, this girl I'm pursuing, says, would you like to meet Nicky Cruz? Oh, right. I said, it, well, yeah. She said, well, he's coming to our hometown. So, like, our hometown is Ashford in Kent. It's like Nowheresville. <laughs> like, no, nothing ever happens there. But then this guy, Nicky Cruz, is coming to our hometown. He's on a tour of the, of the UK and Europe. And he's coming to tell his story. So she invited me to go and listen to him. Now, I thought it would be just the two of us. I had no idea that there'd be other people who'd be at all interested. I just thought, oh, well, no one's... Gonna, uh, probably a few handful of people have written it, read his book. It'll just be us. I go into this sports centre in the middle of our town. There's, like, hundreds of people, like, everywhere, hundreds of people. And I'm sitting there in my leather jacket because I was into bikes at the time, thinking, what is going on? Then this guy comes on. I'm expecting this, like, thug. And this guy comes on. He's probably quite, you know, 30s, 40s by then, in, the, in a posh suit and stuff. And he speaks in this South American accent. I could hardly understand a word he said and started telling his story. And at the end of that, he did an altar call. Now, I'd never seen anything like this in my life. It was a whole new world to me, an altar call. So what, like for, for, for people who are obviously not into, they've not got the relig religious language, what, what is it? So he's basically what? saying, OK, if you know you've messed up, if you know that your life is, is, is not as it should be, if, if you know that there's people you need to forgive, if, if you want to get right, if you want to start afresh, if you want like a, a, a clean slate, you can have that tonight. You come forward and I'm going to pray for you and you can ask Jesus to come into your life and start afresh. So I'm listening to this guy saying this and I think, well, no one's going to do that. I mean, it's ridiculous. But as he's saying it, like people start getting up out of their seats and going forward just to the bottom of the stage. And I'm thinking, well, that's odd. Mm. Wow. And then he kept on. He kept saying, you know, if, if you're if you're angry, if you need if you need to get rid of that, if you need to say sorry to people, if you need to forgive people for hurting you, you, you come forward. Come and let Jesus give you a new start. So I'm starting to cross my arms and cross <laughs> my legs. And I'm thinking, oh, I don't need that. What are they doing? And like loads of people are going forward. But there was some this little voice inside saying, you absolutely need to go down to the front because this is what you've been waiting for. You need a new start. And I'm sitting there fighting it with everything I'm worth. And I think the girl I was, you know, Trina, who was sitting next to me, was like praying, get, Lord, pull him forward, pull him forward. <laughs> and I just, and I really, I fought it and fought it and fought it. It was not what I wanted. It's so totally young. How do you know that that wasn't peer pressure, though? Because, like, you, obviously you've seen all these people yeah. going up. How do you know that there isn't part of you that's saying... I better go because everyone else is going. Because I really didn't want to. And I, I just, just thought it was embarrassing. And I actually thought to myself, if anybody knows me here, it's going to ruin my street cred. Not that I had any. <laughs> it's just like, I do not want to do this. So I'm really not wanting to do this. Yeah. Whatever these nutters are doing, it's not, me, not for me. Mm. But then he just kept on. He just kept right. on, no, there's more people here. I mean, it's like like you see on Billy Graham, kind of cut, yeah. you know, the coaches will wait. Um, <laughs> well, we weren't on the coach, but I was just thinking, no, 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 no. But there was just like this pounding in my heart. This is what you need to do. And like on about the seventh time of asking, when practically everybody possible who's going to go forward has gone, yeah. I just got up and I went forward. And it's just like I, I was fighting it all the way. And having done that, I was expecting the Hallelujah Chorus or, or something. I was, ex I was expected to feel something. I got to the front. He mumbled this prayer. I have no idea what he said. He said, <laughs> Amen. And I thought, was that it? I didn't feel a thing. Yeah. And all I could think of was, I just want to get outside and have a smoke. Right. So then he said, OK, we've got people some literature you might want to take away. And I'm thinking, I don't want any blooming books. I want to smoke. <laughs> so I'm coming away and these people are trying to be nice to me and give me some stuff. And saying, OK, well, I'll take it. But um, I just wanted to get out. I went outside and I was just so disappointed because I thought I was going to feel something. Right. And I can't honestly say I felt anything that night. But mm. I, something happened that night, even though I didn't really feel anything. I look back and I, I can say that was the night something changed in me because I began to change. Yeah. I began to want to read the Bible. Yeah. I began to want to meet other Christians. I began to want to find out, what have I just mm. done? I think that act alone of... Hearing that voice in your head saying, you have got stuff to seek forgiveness for. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't have, like a, a voice, yeah, I mean, yeah, it was just yeah. like a feeling. A feeling, yeah. yeah. But, but kind of listening to that and, t 
again, action, because that, that's what faith is, it's action. S standing up and going mm. is, is, is humbling yourself, really. Yeah. I think it's, it's, a, it's an act of humility to say that, actually, I don't want to go up there. It's embarrassing. I don't need to go up there. Mm -hmm. So you could just sit there and say, so I'll let them go. Mm. But the fact that you, you kind of humble yourself in that moment and go and do it, that in and of itself, to me, is, is like, it's an act of faith, isn't yeah. it? Definitely. I mean, one of the scriptures says faith without deeds is, is dead or pointless. Yes. So I guess you're right. You know, that was my little act of faith. Yeah. I mean, I could not go back now to the life I lived before. It was just pointless and empty. So you, you were a banker. Right? Yeah. yeah, I mean, I was a right mixed up kid, if I'm honest. I was right. a banker by day and a biker by night. <laughs> I wasn't really a very good at either. Um, but yeah, I, I was trying to find who I really was. Right. I th yeah. And I think this is one of the things that L has really taught me, that we all need to know who's well, not just who we are, right. but whose we are. What is our true identity? Right. And I think this is one of the problems. Since, since People are trying to find their identity in so many things oh, these days. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, and we're chopping and changing, and we're, yeah, trying, yeah. we're trying to reinvent ourselves. I mean, we're all taking on Madonnaisms. You know, yeah. We're all trying to reinvent ourselves to yeah. find... But, but, but actually, we have got a true identity, um, but the only one who can really reveal that is the one that called us into being. And I'm not talking about your mum and dad. I'm talking about the one who made everything. Mm. So, again, another thing we teach a lot about is identity. It's actually finding who am I? Mm. Whose am I? Yeah. You know, why am I here? What's the point? Mm. Where am I going? Um, those are key questions. And, and people, you know, avoid those things because, you know, it's, it's quite in your face to address some of those things. Yeah. But actually... I kind of think you've got one life, you've got to make the most of it. And if you can actually find the, the maker of that life and the one who made you and the one who's got a purpose for you, well, how much more successful is that going to be? Yeah. That's a key word, though, isn't it? Success. Is that mm. I think people's idea of what success is is, is, is part of the problem. Because, mm. like, were you making quite a bit of money when you were... Not at that stage. Banking. No, no. <laughs> I mean, actually, bankers earn pitiful amount, amounts right. until they start okay. to get up the, right. up the runs. Okay. But by the time I left... But I it's was, what you were chasing, was it? Yeah. By the time I left, I was earning a, a reasonable package, but yeah. it was not multi-million. It wasn't yeah. you know, megabucks. It was yeah. it was okay. It took me a long time to get there. A lot of exams, <laughs> a lot of studying, a lot of hard work. Yeah. But actually, you never have enough, do you? No, no, no. I think some of the most miserable customers I ever met had a lot more than I would ever have, <laughs> and they wanted more. Mm -hmm. So that was just like a, a false errand, really. It, it, it kind of feeds itself, doesn't mm. it? So the more you have, the more you need to sustain that lifestyle your lifestyle gets bigger so you got to get yeah so yeah it just doesn't work no i think what it does is it kind of pads us from some of those difficulties of life mm -hmm. but it's not really life yeah which isn't to say that money's a bad thing oh, no. just the love of it yeah uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah which is uh, uh, you know say don't is uh, that Money's the root of all evil, but it's not. It's, it's the love, of, love money. of money. And Jesus yeah. says the thing is you can't serve both God and money. You've got to decide where, where, where your priority yeah. is. So to serve God doesn't mean to say you're going to be poor and you know have an yeah. awful time, but it might do. Yeah. This is the thing. When Jesus says, follow me, he's basically saying, follow me. So you have to go where he, he yeah. leads you. That's, that's quite a scary thing. I've found as well that like it's been in the, in the situations where you don't have everything that it allows God to move. Mm. So you remember the, the miracle lamb story. So, so this so this is when, uh, so we, we came over to your, this is when you were still in... Um, with a slack. With a slack. And we, you, there was a village fair going on at the time. You were over there. And me, me and Annie, we, we, so we, this is when we were living in Yorkshire. And we were like, our, our food budget was, well, not just food, but our household budget was £22 a week. And that, that was to get everything, groceries, uh, you know, cleaning products, everything. So we were living on like pasta with beans mixed in uh, for tea at night. Uh, and uh, it was coming up to Christmas and we sat down, the two of us, and we made a list of, of if we could have it, what, what we'd want yeah. for Christmas. Yeah. Um, and, and it was like, well, Christmas dinner. We, the, there's no way this year we're affording a Christmas dinner. It's like, because to put a Christmas dinner together, that for us at that time would have been like a month's food budget. So, but, okay, if I could have whatever we want this Christmas for, for, for dinner, I'd, I'd love a leg of lamb, because my favourite meat is lamb. 
absolutely love lamb. That that would have been my perfect Christmas dinner. Um, it weren't going to happen. But we, we, you know, we made this list and we prayed about it and we said, you know, like, God, if if, if it's within your will to, to, to bless us, <laughs> please, 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 then then you know, I'd, I'd love lamb dinner for Christmas. Anyway, we, so we come to uh, with the slack for this uh, Christmas fate thing. And I bought a couple of raffle tickets. I do remember now. Yeah, I, I got a couple of raffle tickets for the because um, this this was a farming community, mm. like proper like. Mm. Is that the same? I mean, obviously, people can tell where the story's going right now. I bought a raffle ticket, and basically, I went over when they called out my number. I was like, "Oh, babe, we we won something!" So I went over, and it was the massive leg of lamb um but it was literally from a local farm because they were all they're all like most of them are farmers this 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 thing had been reared literally probably <laughs> like just two fields away yeah. so it, it it's things like that where it's like actually if you have all the money if you can afford to just get what you want it would be nothing want, wouldn't it it'd be nothing and and there'd be no opportunity there for God to move because we wouldn't be asking him for something like that. We wouldn't have sat down and made a list of the things we'd, we'd love, if, if possible, for Christmas dinner because we'd just buy it. Yeah. And it's like when you don't have those things, you're forced into a position where you have to rely on God. And it's when you start relying on God and asking him for things, you see stuff like that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we, we don't I think this is probably one of the problems of the Western church. Yeah. A guy called Francis Schaeffer in the 1960s, a brilliant, brilliant philosopher and theologian, he said that the biggest problem facing the church is personal peace and prosperity. Yeah. Because when you get so comfortable, you don't feel you need God. Yeah. Why would you pursue him? And I think he was so spot on. I, th I think God longs to bless us, but the danger of blessing us materially is that we just don't think we need him anymore. Mm. We, we rely on it. Yeah. It, be it becomes an idol, yeah. that's the thing. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, good to hear that story again. <laughs> <laughs> well, John, got one last question for you. Uh oh. Um, Big swings in. I, I, I have a few actually that I've, I've come together with. Because uh, I, I like to end on a bit of a just just a, a final question that's just kind of oh. random. Uh, I'll go with. All right. Yeah. Well, it seems it seems quite suitable. He stood before God. You get to ask him one question. What do you ask him? Well, for starters, if I'm stood before him, I mean, I think I should be on my knees before him, actually. <laughs> I, face down, absolutely overwhelmed because, I mean, look at the stars. Look how big space is. I mean, this is this, this God of ours is huge. I, I can guess, only kind of picture it is if I'm, if I'm in front of Jesus and I'm on my face, I think. And... <laughs> I don't know if I've got a question. I think I've just got one word, really. Thanks. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I've got yeah. a million questions, yeah. Yeah. but I suspect yeah. if I get to that stage, maybe those questions won't even matter. Yeah, it just ceased to be. I think I might have dodged that question yeah. as well as I might. <laughs> well, it's it's a great book. Um, I'm not just saying that. Um, I'm nearly to the end. I uh, highly recommend people go out and check it. It's called. The prologue in the beginning, reflections on Genesis 1 to 3, and you can get it at Amazon. So please do that. John, it's been a pleasure. Thanks Bless you, sir. Thank you, Brian. <laughs>